Jeremy is a high school student doing his research project on 3D printing and he approached me with some awesome questions that he wants answered so I thought being a YouTube channel Jeremy I'd answer your questions in a video. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Maker's Muse guys. So as I said, Jeremy asked me some great questions and I thought if I answered them in a video, they might help out some of you other guys as well. So question number one, what was your first experience with 3D printers and CAD software? So this is a little bit different to a question I answered a little while ago just about printers. But to address that, I first encountered 3D printers probably the age you are in high school. I visited my local university, which at the time was University of Technology in Sydney, and they had their Stratasys machines, which at the time were about $80,000 printing in FDM, they were printing these turbines and things like that and I thought it was awesome. So that's when I first ever saw 3D printers, they were massive fridge sized uh, behemoth 3D printers and it was only till when I was actually in university that I ended up buying one of my own which was an Up Mini which is about that big. So they shrunk a lot in a very short period of time. But in terms of CAD software, I think my first experience was with Rhino. I was interested in building combat robots in high school and a lot of my friends were using Rhino to design their robots. So I started learning that, although I quickly moved on to SolidWorks when I went to university because they were teaching us SolidWorks in the industrial design course I did at UTS. So I think in terms of CAD, it started off with Rhino, but then moved on to SolidWorks and now I'm moving more onto the open source free stuff, open source all free, like Onshape or Tinkercad or Mesh Mixer to do a lot of mesh editing stuff. So in terms of when that was, I think it was in 2006 was when I first saw my first ever 3D printer. Uh, yeah, I'd say 2006. What do you find amazing about 3D printing and design? So I see 3D printers as a tool. A lot, of a lot of people see 3D printers as a hobby. They like to tinker on their machines and make them better. I see 3D printers as a tool. I like the idea of being able to design something, think of something, and then turn it into a physical object by the end of the day. That idea excites me. I really, really love that idea. And it's why I got a 3D printer for myself in the first place. I was printing cable clips for my final year university project on my Up Mini the night before submission. And I didn't need to do it. You know, it was just making it look a little bit tidier, but I, I loved doing that and I wanted to do it. And having a 3D printer was the only way I could do it. So I, that's what excites me about 3D printing. What printer do you recommend to someone with a decent knowledge of 3D printing? Okay, so in terms of decent knowledge of 3D printing, I would probably say something like, again, it comes down to budget, how much you're willing to spend. The Aldi 3D printer, the Cocoon Create that was just released through Aldi is an awesome 3D printer for 500 bucks. I would probably say if you're willing to tinker a little bit in the future, that would be the way to go. It's also known as the Wanhao Duplicator i3 version 2 and so many people around the world are buying this printer and realizing how good it is bang for buck. If you had a bit more money though, I'd go with more, something more like an up box because you can start printing in engineering materials like polycarbonate and that's when you can start really printing functional prototypes for like hardcore functional use. Like you can even print a boat prop, I've seen that done recently, on a nut box in polycarbonate. What CAD program do you recommend? Well, this is a little bit tricky because each CAD program has a specific niche. For example, you have CAD software for jewelry industry, you have CAD software for the medical industry. Each one's designed to do really a specific range of tasks. For example, I like SolidWorks. Well, I was, I was taught SolidWorks in university. It's great for an industrial designer, but it's not good for organic modeling at all. If you want to design monsters or sort of characters, you want something like Maya, something like Mudbox, something where you can freely design and free form shapes without having to do parametric stuff. Although, if you're an engineer, you need to do that parametric stuff, which means you can do measurements and tweak them and the whole assembly will update. In that case, you definitely need something like SolidWorks or Inventor. Although I'm inclined to suggest Fusion 360 as well, which is becoming really popular nowadays. And if you're a student, which you are, you can get Autodesk Maya, you can get Autodesk Inventor, Fusion 360 for free, just using your student emails. So take advantage of that while you can. What's your thought on exotic filament? I'm between two minds on exotic filament. They're great fun to play with, but they're really not that practical. So I recently printed with some wood filament, which was fun and I did some nice prints, but in terms of practical uses, not very high. Also the metal fill PLAs, like the bronze fill or brass fill, or the ones from Protopasta, like the stainless steel PLA, they're lots of fun to use, but have very little practical purpose in my opinion, and a lot of effort to polish them up. 
And the thing about experimental filaments is, yeah, they're experimental. You run the risk of jamming your entire extruder assembly. So yeah, they're good fun, but don't ever print them on your production machines. I've made that mistake before. What do you think of Delta printers? I've only really had one experience with Delta printers and it was an Australian made one called the Redback. It was a very early generation of it. And it had a couple of issues in terms of its extruder design, but Deltas are fast because they can move really quickly with the very light head with the Bowden style extruder. And they're very innovative. I mean, using the three motors in conjunction to move things using trigonometry. I'm not a mathematics person, but they look beautiful when they're printing. They have a weird build volume, it's a cone. So they print large at the bottom in a circle and then move up and taper towards the top as you start hitting limits on the top of the machine. So they're good at printing tall, nice things like vases. But in terms of printing large functional parts, I find them pretty limiting. I do prefer a standard Cartesian design. If you were sent to space and you only have to take one 3D printer with you, what would you pick? Okay, I'd want something reliable, obviously, and I want something that's not too heavy so you don't have to put too much investment into the payload. I would probably go with uh, something, again, not too complicated. So maybe something like an up box with a pretty big volume. Cubicon's a bit too heavy at 30 kilos, 35. would probably be too heavy for NASA to let me send it up. Or to be honest, something like the i3, the Wanhao i3, because it weighs nothing. But obviously a NASA space grade version of it with an enclosure so I could print the polycarbonates I would need to print my various space tools. Because I think polycarbonate printing in space would be the key. You'd need to print with that much higher tensile strength than PLA, because that wouldn't work very well. Where do you think 3D printing will be in 10 years time? Well, a lot of people like to say 3D printing is gonna be in every household. It's gonna be like your regular printer. I don't really believe that. And the reason I say that is it takes a lot of effort to design physical things. You can print out birthday invitations easily using word art and print it out in your standard printer. But even if software for 3D modeling was easier to use for everyone to use, you still need that idea and you still need that drive to make that product. And not everyone wants to do that. Some people just wanna go shopping go to their local Kmart and buy a product, which is fine. But for people like me and probably yourself, where you like to design things, we're the people who are gonna end up with, end up with 3D printers. So they're gonna become cheaper, for sure. They're gonna become cheaper, better, faster, stronger, all of that good stuff. But I don't think everyone's gonna have one. I think it's still gonna be a niche item, kind of like how an A3 scanner is a niche item for graphic professionals. But as a regular person, you don't need an A3 scanner, you just need a regular scanner. But I also like the idea of massive 3D printers becoming like 3D printing hubs, where you go to your local print studio to print big things quickly on their really big 3D printers. That's already starting to happen, but I can see that evolving and becoming more, more polished and lower cost as time goes on. In the future, do you think the majority of households will have a 3D printer? Well, I kind of just answer that. But yeah, to, to summarize, I don't think all of households or majority of households will have 3D printers, but I do think that people who have that knack for 3D design and that drive to 3D print will also will definitely have them. At the moment, a lot of people have that, but it can't afford a 3D printer. I think that will definitely fall into the realm where they can afford it then, but I don't think everyone will have a 3D printer. I think it's definitely gonna still be limited. Do you think CAD design is a good career? Hmm, good question. So. Basically, the way I view design is I view it as a tool and as such, people need it done and people will pay to have it done. So, myself, I'm trained as an industrial designer. I worked for a long time as a designer to get people's ideas and sketches and bring them to the real world through 3D printing prototyping and then eventually to production. So, I thought that role was fantastic. I enjoy that role a lot. What I didn't want to fall into was becoming pigeonholed as a CAD monkey, which is a term you'll hear in the industry where you just get handed designs from someone else and your sole role is to convert it into 3D using your software. Now, a lot of people do that. It's a, it's a good amount of money and I have nothing against it, but that's something I didn't want to, want to do. I always wanted to have control over the designs I was making and control over tweaking those designs if necessary. So in terms of CAD design as a future career, definitely learn it as a skill. It's fantastic and it'll help you in a load of industries. But just be mindful, you wanna keep your options open as to what industry you take those CAD skills to. What's your opinion on school kids using 3D printers? I think it's fantastic. I wish I had access to 3D printers when I was in school. And I think primary school kids up to high school students should have access to 3D printers if they wanna use them. It shouldn't be forced. 
but if they have an idea and they want to design and use it, it should be freely available. And I think that's a fantastic opportunity for Australia's, for Australia's kids and students to actually have access to these tools. A lot of schools now have 3D printers, but I know a lot of schools don't, which, which is a real shame because, you know, I've met kids in primary school who have learned stuff like Tinkercad, who have worked out how to print their own My Little Pony figurines from various bits of software online, and they've gone and done it, and they're only like 12 years old, which is fantastic. You show a 3D printer to a young kid, and you say it's a 3D printer, they're like, cool, okay, let's do something with it. It's not like, you know, my generation where 3D printing is weird and unusual. For them, they just get it. So I think in terms of having 3D printers in schools, it's a fantastic idea and it should be subsidized by the government, no question. So thank you very much, Jeremy, for asking me your questions. I hope I answered them in a way that you found useful. I'm sorry for doing a video, video response. I know you'll have to write them down, but I am a YouTube channel after all. And for everyone else watching, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and found my answers enlightening. And if you want to see more future 3D printing content on Makers Muse, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. And I'll see you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys.